If you're over 18, a British or Commonwealth citizen, and you can get together a deposit of £500, there's still time for you to think about running for Parliament. This year, in this region, a record number of independent candidates is expected to stand in the general election. But for many, it's hard and expensive, with little chance of success. This report from our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair. Well, I'd like to go along and talk to the teachers, okay. if nothing else. From a room in his parents' home, Joe Hall plots the next stage of his campaign to become MP. Until now, the 30-year-old former charity worker has never been actively involved in politics, but he's decided to stand as an independent candidate in Luton South. I think my core vote is the many people who feel I don't want to vote for any party. And it's also the many people who feel they're undecided, they don't know yet who they want to vote for. And they're looking for something that's a bit different. They're looking for someone who is not just going to follow the party line. The £2,000 he'd saved towards a mortgage has gone into bankrolling his campaign. Family and friends are also helping out. They're all out on the streets. They've got nowhere to go. Mm. He's given up his job yeah. so every day he can go and visit places like this media workshop for young people. Across the region, a number of independent candidates are starting to come forward as the general election gets nearer. Normally, they would privately admit that they don't stand much of a chance and won't make much impact. But this year, there's a very different feeling in the air. I think independents are going to be more important than in any other election in my life, which is not to say that a great number of them are going to be elected, but some will be, and others are going to affect the result quite drastically. Following the scandal about MPs' expenses, there is a belief that many voters are looking for something different. In Luton, there'll be no shortage of choice, but we struggle to find people who'd be prepared to actually vote for an independent. I'd consider it as long as, like I say, as long as they're going to do what, what they say they'll do. It's maybe safe to go with uh, what you know. I don't think they stand much chance of getting elected, so is it a wasted vote? This man would say no. Tony Clark used to be a Labour MP. Hello, now he's an independent councillor in Northampton and he'll stand as an independent in the general election. Sometimes it can be a lonely field that you're ploughing, but I think there is the opportunity to say, I'm telling you as it is, there's no spin in here. I've, there's no ulterior motive. And, and that can be refreshing, not just for me, but for them. For any candidate, the next few months will be lonely, expensive and a hard slog. But for the independents, particularly so. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East. And there's more on independent candidates on The Politics Show. that Sunday midday here on BBC One. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been doing our bit to tell the history of the world through certain objects. We've managed to tell the history of the world mainly in about two and a half minutes. Uh, <laughs> last night it was the Bible of town planning from the man who designed Letchworth Garden City. Today it's been your turn. The BBC invited people to bring in their own objects with a bit of history and believe it or not there were one or two discoveries. John Mapp reports from Northampton Museum. Think of Northamptonshire's history and you'll probably think of two things. Boots and shoes. And they're both very much on display here at Northampton's museum, including exhibits like this one dating back to the 1890s. But today is about going a little further back and digging a little bit deeper. Oh, go on, get it out. Oh, wow. Of course, it's not always this easy. At this History of the World event, a makeshift sand pit inspires the archaeologists of the future. And on display, ten objects chosen by the BBC and the British Museum to best represent Northamptonshire's history. The smallest object on display here is this. It's tiny. It's a love token dropped by a soldier at the Battle of Naseby. And on it is inscribed the name Joyce. It was found at the spot on the battlefield where the dead lay thickest. And we are left to wonder whether that soldier ever saw his beloved Joyce again. And it's treasures like that this event was designed to unearth. He just picked it up and put it in his van. Doug and Val Percival from Northampton brought along a couple of cannonballs found by Doug's brother near Junction 14 of the M1. I would say that that is a Civil War piece of ammunition. And you'd fire that, skipping it off the fields to break people's legs. It would be very unpleasant indeed to be on the receiving end of a thing like that. Now guess where Val was keeping this historic artefact? That was being kept on my um, brother's desk as white paperweights. Mm. <laughs> English Civil War musket. Paperweights, a paperweight, yes. 
And it's a bit of Northamptonshire history. And it's a bit of Northamptonshire history at the same time, yes. The idea is to take photos of the objects that people bring in and then upload them onto the BBC's A History of the World website so that everyone can see them. It all begs the question, what hidden treasures could be lurking in your home? Joel Knapp, BBC Look East, Northampton. It's good, isn't it? Fantastic. It's brilliant, yeah. And there's more about the history of the world on a special BBC website. Go to bbc.co.uk slash a history of the world. Today's object is a fragment of textile from a 2,000-year-old mummified body which was found in Peru. There's also a list of events happening near you. Now, you see, that's great as well, isn't it? Now, earlier we posed the question, is the snow heading for you? There's a man here who can tell us where it is heading, Jim. It's on its way for some of us, uh, in the north and west of the region mainly. Anyway, we've been sent some very nice pictures from Northamptonshire, where the snow has been falling, from Sissy Shingles, and she's got two dogs, Milo and Rocky. And uh, you'll see that one of the dogs there on the left looks like it's very deeply stuck in its snowdrift, or it could, on the other hand, be quite a small dog. But anyway, the snow's settling on the grass there, and it's all because of this bad...